Hello, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to do a case study. Then, uh, then we go to the literature review. Then, uh, uh, then at the end we answer the case study. So, the first things first, we are going to just go through the questions. Then after the literature review, then we go and answer the uh, case study at the at the end of the literature review. Okay. So. This case study is uh, saying uh, what is the patho pathology seen, uh, what three symptoms may the patient present with, then what is the treatment of choice. Okay, so that's a case study. So for the literature review, so uh, our case is uh, the it's a uh, buffering cyst or buffering gland abscess, which is just uh, a fluid filled sac within one of the bathroom glands of the vagina. That's the bathroom cyst, as I will define it. Okay. And then for the bathroom cyst, uh, you have to now go through the anatomy. At least you have to know uh, that the, you have to know the external anterior view and also the internal anterior view of the vagina. Okay. So, as you can see here, that's where we are just going to concentrate on, on the bathroom glands. Okay, so that's where the bathroom glands are. Okay, then that's where the opening of the right uh, bathroom gland is. Okay, so that's where now most of the, uh, either on the left or the right side, on the openings, that's where even the, even that's where even the cyst or the, abscess can occur okay so that's the anatomy okay then in terms of the etiology and pathology the bathroom glands are the, the which is the greater vestibular glands are located deep to the posterior aspect of the rabia majora then their openings are located either uh, located either side of the vagina orifice within the vestibule of the vagina appropriately four o'clock and eight o'clock positions then just below the amen amen ring they secrete mucus to lubricate the vagina that's the uh, function and the, uh, the anatomical position okay and then uh, there will be a build up so there will be a build up of uh, of mucus secretions which can cause the duct of the gland to become blocked then from which a cyst can develop then the cyst itself can become infected and if untreated develops into an abscess so if cyst is on forms first after the, uh, the gland become blocked okay after the build up of mucus secretions it becomes blocked and then after it becomes infected and if untreated then it can go into an abscess okay so that's how the uh, how the disease progresses okay so then the infective organism are usually aerobic with uh, a Shalisha coli and the MRSA and STI is the most uh, common so those are some of the things you have to know okay then the risk factors we can have a bathroom cyst which is characteristic can occur in nudiparous women of childbearing age. Then it's just characteristic can occur. Then other risk factors include personal history of uh, bathroom cyst, sexual active, so STIs can cause bathroom grand cyst or abscess. Then history of valve surgery. Those are some of the risk factors. Then clinical features. So clinical features we can have with more bathroom cysts. Most are often asymptomatic. If they become large, they can cause valve pain, particularly when walking and sitting. Then, if, uh, and of course, going to cause uh, superficial dyspareunia, and dyspareunia, of course, is just pain during sexual intercourse. Then, the cyst can undergo spontaneous rupture, after which the patient typically experiences a sudden relief of pain. Then, bathroom's abscesses typically present with acute transit of pain and or difficulties passing urine. Then on examination, there will be a unilateral labia mass, which will be observed 
the least typically arises from the posterior aspect of the labia majora, although a large cyst or abscess can expand anteriorly. Okay, then a Bartholin cyst typically soft and fracturant and non tender. That's uh, an examination. The Bartholin cyst is typically soft, fracturant, and non tender. Then a Bartholin abscess is typically tense, add with the surrounding cellulitis. That's how you can differentiate whether a patient has come with a cyst, a Bartholin cyst, or Bartholin uh, abscess. Okay, then for differential diagnosis, we can have. Uh, for a mass in the, the differential diagnosis for a mass in the labia or valve region includes so we can have a Bartholin gland carcinoma, which is primary carcinoma that is rare and approximately is 0.1 to 5 percent of valve malignancies. Then a Bartholin is benign tumor such as adenomas and nodular hyp hyperplasia, these are rarer than Bartholin's uh, carcinoma. Then other type of cysts, we can have sebaceous cysts, skin's duct cysts, and the mucous cysts. Then we also have other solid masses such as the fibroma, lipoma, and leiomyoma. Okay. Then investigations we can do in someone with a Bartholin cyst. Uh, so for, for you to make a diagnosis of Bartholin cyst or abscess, it's, it's usually a, a clinical one, and uh, further investigations are not routinely uh, required. However, if the woman is over 40 years of age, and then the biopsy of the cyst should be considered, especially if there are no solid components to the swelling. And this is done so to exclude vulva carcinoma. Then if there are any indications of a sexually transmitted infection, and the cervical and dye vaginal swabs should be taken, as well as when someone keeps on coming, if someone is sexually active and they keep on coming with a uh, bathroom cyst or bathroom gland abscess. You can also do these uh, in cervical and diver joint as well. Okay. Then in terms of management, we have, if the cyst is small and asymptomatic, usually no treatment is required. You can just have the patient of home, home bath, which can be recommended, and uh, as they may stimulate spontaneous uh, rupture. Okay. Then treatment is usually, uh, we can have two types of treatment. So it depends. After this one, we are recommend cyst bath. The other types we can have is uh, we have two. We can have two types. The first one is uh, a wet catheter. So we will masupiarization. So these are the two types we can do. So we can either do wet catheter or masupiarization. And there is no high quality evidence comparing different uh, treatment options. However, simple incision and drainage without masupiarization. Or placement of a wet catheter means that the accumulation of fluid is likely to reoccur due to uh, further outflow obstruction. So that's why if you just do I and D, then it's more likely going to uh, reoccur again. Okay. Then for the wet catheter, uh, this is where you make an incision into the cyst or abscess, and the catheter is inserted. And uh, the tip is inflated with uh, about two to three mils of saline, and it is left in place for at least four to six weeks to allow epithelialization of the surgically created tract. Then, uh, this technique is not suitable for a deep cyst or abscess, it can be performed under local anesthesia in a clinic. Then complications for this uh, same procedure can have infection, recurrency, dyspareunia, and scarring. Okay. So then uh, for masupiarization, this is where you make a vertical. So this is where you make a vertical incision, which is made into the cyst, and then behind the hymenal ring, allowing for spontaneous drainage of the cavity. Then the cyst O is then evaded. Okay, so the cyst is then evaded and uh, appro approximated to the end of the vaginal mucosa by sutures. Then this allows, so this is going to allow us, so uh, this is going to allow us, uh, or this requires a general anesthetic to achieve good mesopirization. Then after you cut through the with a scalpel, then after you drain, then you of course 
you put uh, you put sutures that they find there then you you put it uh, again you suture the other ends as well okay then complications for mosquitoization include breeding hematoma dyspareunia and infection so after you have sutured you prevent also recurrence but of course even if you do mosquitoization the chances of recurrence are still there just that they are they are reduced as compared to some when someone just does a uh, iron d alone okay so that's all on the mosquitoization then less commonly used technique include uh, silver nitrates cautery uh, carbon dioxide uh, laser and needle aspiration then complete excision of the gland is rarely performed and and usually only in cases of suspected malignancy that's where most uh, cases you can do uh, complete excision of the gland okay then there is no evidence of a routine back a routine pack to pack the cavity after any of these uh, procedures then antibiotics are generally not used in the management of a bathroom cyst or abscess. However, if they can be considered if the patient is systematically unwell or the patient is immunocompromised. Okay, so that's the end of the literature review. Then for the to answer the case study, so what is the pathology scene? Of course, this is a bathroom abscess. If you are even if you put bathroom cysts you get the question correct okay and then uh, what three symptoms may the patient present with of course there will be a tender lump on either side of the vagina there will be dyspareunia there will be difficulty knocking or sitting then also there will be a vaginal discharge there will also be fever as well okay then they may be uh, the last question is what is the treatment of choice so the treatment of choice of course the treatment of choice is masupialization okay masupialization that's the treatment of choice where it's typically masupialization involves just draining then after you drain you can even give with uh, you can even give antibiotics at the end or like uh, the review said it's not necessary to give antibiotics but if the patient is not systema is systematically unwell or immune compromised you can give antibiotics then the other thing we talked about was a uh, cyst bath where if the patient comes and it's not ruptured it's just a, it's asymptomatic you can tell the patient to be having a cyst bath okay or even after masupialization you can still tell the patient to be doing cyst bath but the treatment of choice is masupialization which involves drainage then after you drain then of course you may give antibiotics that's the end of the literature and uh, thank you for watching please subscribe and uh, please watch other videos and other literature reviews that we have on the channel and uh, thank you for watching once again